we're doing what was your, your most stressful and challenging moment as in family, community, and in the Chicano uh, The most... Uh, Uh, there was a whole lot of stresses. Uh, one of the most stressful was after the police attacked. Uh, I saw not this kind of yeah. You know a little bit about that? Uh, uh, we had a big demonstration on this thing. On this thing? Yeah, a little bit there. And, uh, you know, we had about 30,000 people marching down, 50,000 states of the yeah. road. And the police made an excuse and just broke it all up and beating the people. They killed the vets all inside, the reporter, and, and uh, they made all And then they broke people down with their boulevard and people started breaking windows and some people were going to loot it. And, and it, so it was all our fault. And those crazy Mexicans are out there riding. But we had, been, we had people from all over March. Um, so, but after that, then what do we do? And that was, well, we have to speak out against that. We have to. This is the first time anything like that had happened in thing. Mm -hmm. But it was, you know, there were other times that we did big deportations, but we didn't have to speak out. And people spoke out a little against the attacks on the suit shooters. But in terms of modern times, there haven't been anything like that. So we had to speak out to our community and gather support. And I had to become, I was a major speaker on the issue, I had to become in the community, but this is the whole community that was attacked. So we had to stand up and take on the police department and take on the establishment and, and, uh, and we did for a number of months to do that. And so that was pretty tough. Uh, I'm also very proud of, 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 of those times. Uh, and there were uh, times when they sent in uh, agents, undercover agents, and said the Mexican okay. activists and that. They came to, to uh, uh, say that I was too late and they should have another leader and all of this. It turned out later on these were police and federal uh, snitches and uh, agents that were uh, uh, all part of that. And they began, uh, what happened, we said, well, we're gonna, we're not going to shoot it out with you guys. Because they were going to they say, like, and so we set up in a separate place. And then what happened is the cops came in and beat them up. But they, they beat up some of their own infiltrators to make them be credible. And those things got so we got very, very complicated, and we had to keep on going and take on. Then there was a time so that at all the demonstrations there began to be more violence. So there were actually groups that said they, they were out organizing violence, but they were infiltrated by the police. So in all of those demonstrations, it made it like uh, we were the ones. The media and everybody said we were the ones. So the media eventually said, well, it's time to have a moratorium on the police trying to stop the more times because every time they demonstrate there's violence. But actually the government was you know. So that was a very tough one for thing. Did you guys want to ask them specifically about August 29th and about how I think you I think everyone has a question. But. I was gonna ask you why were you there? Like what motivated you to be there at the moratorium? Okay, well you know why we were I, I had been the we had what, what began to move it we had an idea to build the home, to get our whole community, or as much as, and especially those in the Chicano movement against them. So we did that. We started going to the war demonstrations, but we would go and take people, but we wouldn't be on TV. They'd show the white, they'd show the black, they'd show Native Americans, but there were no Chicanos on TV. So we had to have our own Chicano moratorium, because that's what we call anti-war marches in our own community. So we had the first one just over here at Jose Park, from the Cinco Puntos. Here it is. We had the first one right there because there's the monuments to the dead soldiers from World War II in Korea and Oregon Park, and there was thing about our medal winners. So, and, and Oregon Park is named after a congressional medal of honor winner. So, we're, we're not against our veterans, we're not against our soldiers, we're against an immoral war, and we want our we're not against our troops, we want them home. And so, that was the first one we had 2,000. And we were already setting up little meetings around the country, and they heard about it. Oh, you got well. well let's start, have talk this at the next conference. It was one in March. It was national. Why don't you guys come and we'll all make a proposal for peace? And we had a second one, moratorium, February 28th, 
And we marched this time, Not they made us go a side street on Michigan, so to Oberdorf Park, because we, we didn't have any momentum. But we, by then, we had more momentum in February, two months later, and we marched from Atlantic Park, just down the street, you know, from the swimming pool in St. Alphonsus, to Whittier, and all the way to Laguna Park. It was pouring rain. 5,000 people from all over the state came. We marched in the rain. And uh, different things were happening. The first women's group, a lot of the women in the Brown Berets, for example, they didn't like how they were being treated. They formed their own group. They, they said, we're, we're being hindered from working in the movement and working against the war, so we're going to have our group called the Army. The Mecha groups came, they changed from Umas to Mecha. They came and they made big banners. Can you repeat the name of the group? Mecha. That's the student group. Movimiento Estudiantil Chicano de Azua. And for the girls? Las Adelitas. This is Las Adelitas. This is Gloria Arianes. She's a leader now in the town because her mother was a Native American, the original tribe from the But she was the only woman minister of the Brown Berets. Do you know how to spell it? Gloria Arellanes. No, Las Avelitas. L-A-S. And Avelitas is A-D-L-I-T-A-S. In the Mexican Revolution. A-D-E. Huh? A-D-E. A-D-E. L-I-T-A-S. L-I-T-A-S. And, uh, in the Mexican Revolution, there's a famous song of the Adelita. There were the women that went with the men to be at the front lines with the men. Some fought, some were cooking, some were whatever. But they were women revolutionaries during the Mexican Revolution. What was the name of the song? Adelita. Oh, the... Adelita se llama la pobreza en tu Anyway. And they made Channel 28, made a film of that, and, uh, of this, this, very, this march. And the media hardly said anything. But like there was the famous... Uh, Reporter Ruben Salazar was starting that he put it on Channel 34. He wrote a column in the LA Times about it because we had talked to him before he went. That's too much detail. Uh, but that was a big march. So now other people were interested in doing the march. A month later, we had this national conference in Denver, Colorado uh, at the Crusade for Justice. And just like we had planned a few months before, there was a workshop on peace, and I was a chairman. And then, so we made a thing, we made a plan. All kinds of groups now wanted to have their own Chicano and Taiwan, their own Chicano and so we said, okay, that's great. But Fresno had one, uh, we played it. We're already getting ready to have them. Okay, why don't we have a plan, though, to have a big moratorium in the summer, in a few months, and all the other towns can, in between, have their own moratoriums, leading up to this one big one. When are we going to have it? Well, maybe we should have it the 16th of September. Well, no, the students will be back at school. And no, that's a Mexican holiday. We want to have our own Chicano holiday, our own Chicano day. And well, the next week before is, is Labor Day. No, see, that'll be the same thing. Okay, the next weekend, August 29th. Okay, that'll get people trying to build up and we can have other demonstrations and people will still be on vacation and come to LA. Okay, honestly. So then I went. Uh, so they, that was in the morning session and the afternoon session that day. We went and uh, we had this film. It's still available, so I you might see it again. Right? But uh, the, the March in the Rain, and uh, we showed it, and it just everybody just loved it. August 29th. Jesus Trevino has a restaurant. Not August 29th, it's called uh, Chicano Morrison. It was a 28 minute film. It would help you guys a lot to see it. And at a certain point, um, so, so now, so now we have a national plan. I'm going to go real quick, and then we plan to have a one big demonstration. So all across the country, in Fresno, in Houston, in Denver, and this, there were marches of 500, a thousand. There were 2,000 marches in, 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 in Oxnard, which was only about 25,000 people at that time. They got the whole lot going. And in all of those areas, people were taking on the issue. Of and you know, it's not easy. It wasn't easy then. May not trouble not now. Cause they had people had it from the priest was saying, no, 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 you're supposed to go to the, the principal of the school, you know, that's what you sign up, you know, for ROTC. Or, you know, the, the, uh, the parents were saying, that's what, you, oh, meanwhile, you know, you're supposed to serve. You, know? you had to deal with the press, you had to deal with the police, you had to deal with all those things. In all of those neighborhoods, barrios, all across, people were doing it. And how do you do it? We had this film, but one that we had, we showed it to them. How do you have a Chicano market? And so you had 
people that mother uh, was a leader of the welfare group. Sal Castro, who was a teacher, you know, who led the lockout. He spoke. An attorney, the Oscar Acosta, was called the Brown Buffalo. He spoke in these things, and I spoke the head of the Brown Berets. You, you saw, and we had different speeches and different approaches in this film. And it, and, and it helped educate people. And we, uh, anyway, so there was this whole movement. And it was going to have one big day, which was the climax, August 29th. And so, on August 29th, all of these people were going to come. And I was the chair. Now, I, we had a lot of people in the committee, and somebody was in charge of security. Somebody was in charge of getting the housing. You know, because people were coming from where they're going to stay. Because we didn't have to We didn't have no dormitories. And somebody was going to be in charge of making food. They made menudo for all the people coming out from out of town. You know, and all these different things that we did. And, and we had news uh, conferences and, and all of that. And uh, so on August 29th, uh, we were set to have. Now my role was, I was there to give a speech, to welcome the speech, uh, to start the whole program, and to go and greet everybody, because I had traveled around the country, all people on the phone. I was the, 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 the out front person. And uh, the other people were doing other, other roles. So that was my job, and it was, it was fabulous. See, we had people from almost, there were almost 30,000 people there. And they were from almost every neighborhood, every bathroom, in all of the Southwest and beyond. Something like that had never happened. And we wanted to get 50 or 100,000. This was the biggest that it ever happened. And it was not uh, the middle class people coming to a convention in Hawaii or this or that. This, this, was, in, this was for people. See, when we went to the, the peace movement, we went to these demonstrations, and we would be there, the media would never cover it. So here they would have it, they would show the Black Panthers, and they would show the Indians, and they would show the white people, and the hippies, and you wouldn't see it too much. So the peace movement was educating people to be against the war, but it wasn't educating us, so we were left out, we were still fighting the war. So when they called people to volunteer in Vietnam around those times, the Chicago, the guys wouldn't want to fight anymore. The whites were scared of the blacks. In fact, in this film, there's a guy that could stay back from Vietnam, and he said, and, and so there was a Chicago film. And so then we're even dying with more of them. But, uh, so, we, uh, but by the time we were demonstrating, she kind of started not going to fight also. And it was having a big impact. Because then, how are they going to, the U.S. going to fight a war when the, the soldiers weren't going to fight a And the, their moms and dads and their homes didn't want to, they don't they call it the Vietnam City. But we had all these people there from all these neighborhoods, and it was, it was the grassroots. And, and uh, so people were there, they were seeing their cousin that they hadn't seen, you know, they see their, oh, and Paso is here, here's that banner and said, Paso, oh, I have a cousin, they go there, they see me see a cousin or a friend, or this person or that person. There was a couple that were part of uh, uh, Umas, one was from Northridge, and one was from uh, SC, and they got married at St. Alphonsus, and they came right out of the, the wedding, in the tuxedo and the nice white gown and with their with their best man and the made of honor and came right into the march. There were groups, uh, there was some these people killed by the police, undocumented workers by mistake. Huh? Oh yeah, well Ruben Salazar was there too. But uh, they were they marched, yeah, he covered that. But so groups that were already forming to become undocumented workers to raise the issue of immigration because the deportation was starting to get big. They were just starting to get big. And there was a group, and they marched here. I remember this man, Bert Colonna, from walking up to the stage to speak. And he could go, so he'll come here, and he introduced me to about 12 And it turns out they're all undocumented workers. And that's it. I thought, I'm putting my life on the line. But these people are here backing me up, and they're putting their lives even more. And from that day on, I said, they're, my, they're not just somebody that's being suffering, and we're all suffering, but those are my brothers and sisters in the struggle for peace and justice. 